Hey everybody, Josh here from Rust Belt Diecast Racing, and today we're going to learn how to modify Micro Machines for racing. Now we have a Micro Machines race series coming up called the Micro Mods, and it's any Micro Machines sized vehicle modified to race. So today we're going to learn how to modify for this specific race, but also just in general. So there's a few different kinds of Micro Machines. This is the Micro Machines brand Micro Machine. It's got a single screw on the bottom and you just need to have a small screwdriver to get in there. On all of these, the wheels are pretty loose, so we're gonna work on those. This is another version. This is a Hot Wheels version of Micro Machines, small cars, and it's got a metal base on it. Lots more room in there for weight. And then this is kind of a generic China car that um, you might see more of at like thrift stores and stuff like that, people just getting rid of bags of them. But it actually has a metal body on it, which is another weight dynamic that you can add in. For today's video, this is the vehicle that we'll be modifying for the Micro Mods race. So let's take a look at some of the tools that you'll need. You need a very small Phillips head screwdriver, and hopefully most of this stuff you have laying around your house, um, possibly not this item here. This is uh, Derby Dust. This is a graphite lubricant. Uh, this is a pretty essential part for racing. You can get that Amazon craft store or whatever. Um, same thing with that. Metallic paint pens, acrylic paint pens, Sharpies, anything that you would use to detail something. Um, today I'm going to be using this acrylic paint and a small brush but you can paint the entire thing with paint pens or Sharpies even if you want. The only rules is that it needs to be painted and it needs to have numbers on them. So we'll start with the car here, flip it over to the base and you'll see the little screw on the bottom. Then we'll take our small screwdriver and get it in there. And sometimes you'll need to apply some pressure to get it started. I need to push down a little bit because this is a very small screw you'll see when we get it out. It um, might be a little tight in there. So get in there with your fingers, whatever you gotta do to get that puppy out. So you see how small that screw actually is. So then you're left with the base here that's nice and loose after you get the screw out. And you can just pop it off with your finger there, set that aside, and then here's the wheels. You see how they're just loose sitting in there, and we're gonna replace them kind of the same way, and there's your body. So that's all your parts that you have once you get it taken apart. Just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to now bore you with the details of how to get these rivets out of the bottom of some of these cars. It's obviously going to be a little more complicated, but you need a very small bit. This is one that I use for modifying Hot Wheels for drilling out the rivets. And you want to get into the center there. If there is no center, you want to use a nail to make a punch so that you have a, a spot to start. And you just want to get in there with the with the drill, get down. It looks like I'm crooked in there, but actually the car is leaning, so I'm adjusting for that. You want to make sure you're straight down, you're drilling straight down. And that's really blurry, there we go. And you can see how it's already affecting the rivet. This is the exact same process. I'll have the thing pop up here at the top of the screen. It's the exact same process as making the Hot Wheels cars modified for racing and taking those apart. So we'll go and we did that one. Now we're gonna do the other one. So two rivets on this one. Some of them only have one rivet where that screw hole is, but for the majority of them, they do have two rivets. So we just wanna get in there and drill that out. Just remember to go nice and slow when you're drilling these rivets so you don't slip off or go too far and drill through the body of the car. Now that our rivets are drilled down, we'll need a slightly larger bit that's kind of shallow. You can see there in the example. And you get that right in the center of where you drilled. And this will take off the edges of the rivet. And this is how you're actually going to separate it. Oops, slipped a little bit there. 
Watch your fingers doing this. These cars are really small. So you can see how that took off the top end of the rivet. And you still got a little bit of work left to get them off. So you might want to use a file, a little small file. And you can just take the top off like that. So I went through and did both of them. And then you can take a little flathead screwdriver and open them up a little bit. Just get underneath, pop, pop, come right out. So same process now as we had before. And you can just pull those out. There's the nice metal body, which is great for modifying. Lots of room in there to add some weight since there's no weight limit on these cars. To get these back together, you might want to use a product called JB Quick. I would not recommend using super glue at this point because it will actually warp the wheels. But you just put a little dab of JB on the two studs and get your base back on and you're good to go. Now that we have the body taken apart, this is the process for modifying the axles and wheels. So you can see they slide very easily back and forth. The body of the car is the only thing that's stopping them from sliding all the way through. So you want to get a coffee lid or Tupperware, whatever you need to catch some of this graphite. Put a little bit out. Now this process is slightly different than modifying hot wheels for racing uh, where you would do that when the wheels are on the base um, this seems to be very difficult to do with it on the base so you want to get a little bit on your finger and just grind it in like that and you want to focus on pushing it into the little hub on the end of the axle there you can see what i'm doing here just grinding it into the axle where the wheel will spin and then you take the wheel and kind of smush it on there what i'm doing is applying a little bit of pressure with my finger to really grind it on. The powder of the graphite will actually break down and merge with the axle. It does eventually wear out and you might need to redo it, but you can see how well that thing is spinning compared to a stock one that just spins a little bit and stops. That's nice and smooth right there. And that was just a little bit. You can keep on going with this stuff and continue to pack it on there, grind it in, and make it spin even better and faster. And you see some flying off there as I spin it and tap it, and that's perfectly fine. It shouldn't have excess graphite on it, but it should be nice and ground into the axle. So we'll put our axles aside and concentrate on the weight that we'll be adding. Now there's no maximum weight, so you can put in as much as you want. I'm just gonna show you the process here to add a little bit of weight to this vehicle, make it a little bit heavier, hopefully a little bit faster. I'm using these split shots. Um, I'm not sure what size split shot that is, but it's, you know, whatever size that is. So you can see it doesn't fit in between those little ridges. So all we have to do is take a pliers and we're going to crush it down so that it will fit in between. We're going to kind of flatten it out so it slides in sideways. So these are very easy to flatten, actually. It looks like I'm using my fingers there, but I'm, I'm using the handles of the pliers. They're very easy to flatten because they're a very soft lead, um, specifically made like that for split shots, so what you can push it onto the fishing line. So now you can see that slides right down nice and clean in there. Um, because the wheels rest on top, you can fill that entire bottom with lead or whatever you want to put in there for weight as long as it's not tungsten putty which doesn't dry that's something they use for pinewood derby so now we'll take a little bit of this jb quick that we talked about before you really don't need much get a little dab on there and then you have another dab of the hardener and once you get it all on there equal parts and come on get it together josh struggling with that thing so once you get it on there equal parts you can stir it up mix it up with a stick or whatever doesn't matter and you'll see it turning gray you know obviously black and white make gray we're, we're having an art class here too I guess so you want to get it on the tip of the popsicle stick or whatever you're using so that you don't get it on the edges as you're putting it down um, these things, I, I cannot stress how small these vehicles are. And when, if you're used to working with a 164 or even larger 
um, vehicles. This is a huge learning curve working with these tiny cars. So once you have it in there, you just push your weight down in there and you see it's a little bit off center. So I just kind of push it back so that it's squared up with the body. So you don't have it going one way or the other flopping down the track like a fish. This is my favorite part of modifying any vehicle, the paint job. So for these, you don't need primer, especially on the plastic bodies. If you're using something like that acrylic paint or these acrylic paint pens or Sharpies or something like that. Now with the paint pens, you can see, you just draw it on. It's just a paint pen. There's paint, it's a pen. Um, or you can use Sharpies. Um, these metallic Sharpies are awesome. Um, I might use that for some pinstriping on one of these at some point. But for today, we're using this acrylic paint. I thought this powder blue showed up cool on camera, so that's the one we're using. And you just wanna get in anywhere where the windows aren't. You know, obviously paint the body of the car. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm laying down a little bit of a base coat and I'm not even allowing it to dry. It's really just layering and you wanna glob it on there for this. And don't worry because it will dry smooth and flat and look really nice as you can see here. So that's the wet car. That's all the paint is still wet on there, but you can see it's already smoothed out really nice. I would recommend getting one of these. This is called a third hand or sometimes a helping hand. And they're like seven bucks on Amazon and it make a world of difference when painting little parts like this. But you can see there it's, it's drying now. It's still kind of gloppy, but it's smoothing out. So we're gonna let it dry and come back. And now we're back. So check that out, nice and smooth. You can see the paint still showing through. I probably could put another coat on or could have put it on a little heavier and let it dry longer. But for this video, this is what I'm doing. So again, these are some markers that you can use. I'm using this metallic silver to very blurrily paint in the headlights on this car. I could also paint in the chrome, but I kind of wanted this one to look like a dirt track car, which is my favorite kind of race car. You know, this would be like a dirt street stock. Um, so I'm gonna paint in a couple of the, the tailpipes here as well. Um, you'll be surprised at how much detail is actually on these cars once you get it painted and you can actually see all the little parts and pieces. So now I'll go back here. Pretty sure this is supposed to simulate a Mustang. So I'm gonna paint in those nice long tail lights on the back. Get those red with a little red Sharpie. You can see there, it's already getting detailed out. Not the cleanest detail from what I see in the video now, but I'll take a black Sharpie, nice fine tip. You're gonna wanna fine tip one to do this next part. We're putting on numbers. So for this race, the cars need to have a number on each side and on the top. So I say it that way, not doors and roof, because you can modify any car for this. So it could be something like this, it could be a tank, it could be whatever. But it needs to have a number that was assigned that you picked to the sides and the top. And that's just so that it looks like a race car and we can pick it out as it's coming down the track that that is your car. So I picked four just because I thought it would be really easy to put on this car, and it turns out it was. So that's all you really need right there as far as painting and numbering the vehicle. So then I wanna put a little RBR for Rust Belt Racing on there. Make it yours, guys. Like, don't just slap a number on it. Make it really yours. Go through, detail it up, put some pinstriping or racing stripes or whatever on it, draw your logo on it. If you're good with like the water slide decals and stuff, give that a shot too. I'm definitely gonna try to make one with water slide decals. Um, see how well that works with the little tiny ones. But this is the car right here. I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, you can, like I said, put the racing stripes on with that metallic silver would look nice on this one, but I'm not gonna do it for this video. So now comes the process of putting her all back together. So we have our body here that we painted, our base that we took apart, and our wheels that we graphited the axles. And there's that little baby screw that we're gonna use to hold the whole thing together. Amazing that that little screw 
holds the whole thing together. So you can see where we added weight in there. Um, it's all set now with the JV Quick. You just drop your wheels back in. Now, alternatively, you can hold the wheels in place as well with JV Quick. I found that they spin faster if they're free spinning like this. On these bases, they have those little notches, little nubs on the ends, and those slide into the little notches that are at the front and back. Make sure the screw hole lines up. There's only one place it can go. Take that little tiny screw and do not ever lose that screw. You will never find another one that size. It looks like it's a little wobbly getting in there, but I just use my fingers to kind of set it in. And then you take your really small Phillips, get some pressure in there, really grind that thing in because it is staying there forever. And there she is. That's our race car. So that's how you modify micro machines for racing and specifically for racing in our micro mod series. There he goes. So thanks for watching. For more videos like this, you can like and subscribe to the channel. Find us on Facebook at Rust Belt Diecast Racing for all of the details on this and many other races that we host where you can build cars and mail them in and watch them race right here on YouTube. It's a ton of fun and the group itself is a great group of people where there's lots of different conversations going on and you can learn a lot about the sport of diecast racing. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.